Hey guys, what's up? At the pick apart. So, wanted to do a EVAP or charcoal coal uh, canister conversion on the early Bronco. Um, yeah, I guess I'm sick of my uh, garage smelling like gas. Um, and also, you know, like I said, every time I walk by the, the Bronco, um, freaking uh, reeks like gas. So, yeah, I'm always worried about freaking, you know, turn on the light switch in the garage because the freaking whole garage reeks like gas. So, let's see if I can find a way to convert this thing or put like an EVAP canister in this thing. So I'm looking for kind of an older car because I don't want anything electronic. I just want to basically vent it out the, uh, the intake, uh, air intake, so. We will see. So I'm actually looking, hopefully I can find like an older Ford or try to keep it Ford as much as I can, you know, but. All right, I'll see if I can find an older car here. Looks something that'll work. Looks like a pretty good dummy vehicle right here. It's an F-250 or F-150. What I'm looking at is, see that's a charcoal canister right there. That line seems like it's pretty tiny though to be able to vent that thing. But I guess you don't really need a big line though. You know, if you're just venting some fumes and vapors out. All right, I think I'm gonna take that thing and I think I'm also gonna do the filler neck too. Because I hate the freaking stock filler neck, man. The venting system on that thing. So I'm gonna see if I can fabricate some sort of like vent to take this thing off. Or I'm gonna go try to see if I can find one after I get the charcoal canister off and see if I can find a way to modify and get a better vent tube on there. All right, cool. I think I found a good donor for the filler cap here. So I wanted something that was metal, something that was even on both sides. Like, like a lot of them are actually angled. A weird angle and I didn't want something with a lot of metal tubing here because it wouldn't give me a lot of flexibility on how to route that thing so this one actually has a lot of like flexible hosing that goes all the way down the tank here and it looks like it's kind of easy to get off so I think this is gonna be probably my best shot at adapting this thing uh, it's not my preferred choice but I mean the metal ones are just freaking, the problem is they're kind of molded to the car. So this one has the shortest tube up here, which will give me more room to mess around with it. All right. There it is, guys. Even came with a ground strap. That's kind of cool. So I don't know if that's going to fit the angle of the Bronco or not. You know, coming around because it has a back wheel like right behind it. So, all right. Okay guys, got this back here, kind of cleaned it up already. It's a charcoal canister. This is the uh, thing with the pipe removed. And uh, I think it was like 21 bucks out the door. So not bad, pretty good with the, with the table or the tubes here. But I guess uh, what I like about this one and um, is it actually has this, this, this little hole in this spring, uh, um, like little closer thing right there. But Anybody that actually owns an old Bronco knows that, dude, every time you fill up uh, with an unleaded pump, you know what I mean, it freaking uh, can spill back out. You know, I've actually, a couple times I've actually had the freaking uh, hose uh, come out of the, the filler plug, fall on the ground, shoot gas everywhere. Uh, also, when the tank gets filled up, it shoots out back at you. So, also, I can never get the freaking pump to lock in place correctly without popping out. So, I'm hoping this is going to solve that problem. Also with the venting, you know, better venting. So, see I'm that? Up here, and, Daddy. I'm up there. Yeah, you're up there. And then, uh, so also there's like a vent uh, cover right there too. And the other, the stock one doesn't have that. So, it's inside look of it. I'm gonna give you some better light for you. There you go. All right. So, so yeah. Now you gotta find a way to adapt it on there and get it going. And I'll have to rent a vent. Maybe splice into this for this charcoal canister. To be, you know, vent the tank. Because once I put the new cap on here, it's gonna be a totally sealed, sealed system. So it will allow air in, but it won't allow air out. So, well, air out will come out this through the charcoal canister or the evap system. All right, cool. Actually, I might even have a better solution. I was just looking at this thing. Um, I, I was looking at this more closely, and it looks like this whole thing is brazed. I think it. See right there, the brazing right there. I think this thing is actually brazed with the uh, lead that was hitting my, my uh, screwdriver and it felt like it was pretty soft. And looking at it internally, um, 
I'm thinking I could probably pop this whole insert out right here. This whole thing that goes into that, that little, uh, whole thing, this little spring load mechanism I think would pop out of there if I heat it up with my torch. And then I could probably just, you know, cut out the inside. Maybe this, this looks like it's actually knurled in there, you know, I think it's bent in there. I can cut this out and then just maybe pop this insert in and then braise it back in there. So, yeah, that could be the, uh, the, the nice clean uh, fitting, the airtight fitting that will hopefully block the overspray. And they can maybe put some of it like the vent thing on there too, you know, the vent protector. All right, cool. Yeah, check that out, guys. The whole piece was just braised in there. It's hotter and shit still. You can see the solder right there. And see, that's it. That's a little flapper. I mean, it'd be nice to get the. Uh, I think that'd be an easier solution. I think just to cut out the uh, the, the old stuff. You know, I mean, the old uh, weird flange on it, and just basically re uh, solder this back in there. You know. And then maybe I'll take the uh, this vent cover. That looks like it's soldered in there too. I don't know if you can see that from that angle, but the uh, that little part right there, the cover goes over the vent, and actually put that in the filler tube on the, in the Bronco, so the vapors don't come out and blow up in there. It's going to kind of block it out, you know, dampen it, uh, dampen the blow a little bit. Cool. Yeah, I didn't realize that these things were soldered in there. You think they'd be maybe like. I guess the new plastic ones are different, but all right. Awesome. All right, guys, have the original. Uh, <clears throat> uh, feel, this actually is not the original one off the car. This is a. Uh, I'm not really sure. I bought this on eBay about ten years ago. Um, so I'm gonna try to get that cap in there. I'm gonna grind these edges out here, and see if I can braise this in, or somehow JB weld this thing in there or something. And then I also, because I don't really have a, my, my tank is an aero tank, 23 gallon aero tank, but they never put a vent on there, like, like a freaking vent for the, uh, like a charcoal canister. So, um, I mean, they actually, there's an EFI return on there, but it's not a, no, uh, freaking vent. So, I mean, I, I told the guy I wanted an EFI tank. So when he built it for me, so, um, all right, so get that going, cut this out, get it in there. Guys, use this little, uh, tool right here. It's kind of like a, it's like a, Carb, I don't know if it's a carbon see what the hell's made of, but and uh, I ran this around it on my drill press, and now this seems to fit. Okay, I'm gonna pop it in there first. I'm gonna clean up the edges right here, and then I'm going to check it out. See, and then I clean up all these edges real like, like you know, like brand new shiny metal, and then uh, hit the heat that's up to my torch and try to. Put some uh, solder on it, you know. Get it going. Hopefully, get an airtight seal. All right, cool. Okay, right, guys. So first, I'm gonna try to braise the thing. If this doesn't, I can't get the thing to braise right. Then I'm gonna weld it with my welder. So, all right. All right. The whole solder thing didn't work. So I actually had some uh, leftover. Some of this uh, auto weld. It's designed to fill the holes in tanks. I also have JB weld too, if I wanted to use JB weld, but. I think I'm going to put some of this uh, auto weld, you know, gas tank repair. I mean, obviously it's, 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 a. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it's not affected by gas because it's designed to fix uh, gas tanks. So I'm just going to wrap around this edge, putty it in the edge and then get it in there. So yeah, I, I need an airtight seal. So, all right. Hope they can hear me over the radio. So yeah, I actually, I use my little shirt on here. And you just kind of ground out the extra, uh, the uh, tank weld stuff, and then I'm gonna come back and sand it, smooth it out, and I paint this whole thing. You probably won't even be able to see a seam there at all. Um, a couple more spots I missed, I gotta fix that, but yeah, I'm gonna come back with some sandpaper and just smooth it up. Yeah, this stuff gets as hard as a rock though, so it's not, I don't think this thing's gonna pop out of there, so. But I mean, even if it does pop out of there, it's not the end of the world, so. But I highly doubt that it is. Cool, and I got the little. In there, so on the vent tube, I think I'm gonna put it on the uh, the uh, the charcoal canister that I'm doing, the uh, evap canister. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tee it into here somewhere on the top. So, all right, 
right back here so got the coat of paint on there like I said you could probably even see that this wasn't even actually part of the factory setup there all right let this thing dry for like an hour, hour and put it back on hey right, guys this phase of the products complete do that well got scraped up coming back in there it's not even, the paint's not even fully dry yet but as we see Modern gas tank modified from a original Bronco filler neck. It's cool. No, cool. No. So hopefully I don't get splashed again. <laughs> hopefully this will prevent this from fucking gas coming in my face or, or or the pump falling out one or the other. So I'm sure if you had an old Bronco and a regular or any kind of car with a open up, open up. tank the <laughs> stop stop dude. Sorry, kids, I'm crazy. All right. All right, guys. A second fill up with this thing, see if I can get it going without dripping. So before, you used to drip right here, and it dripped down all the way over off the uh, thing here. So, you know what? Give me a second here and get it locked in. Give me some gas. No drips. I'm not gonna get a full tank, but before, you used to shoot out gas everywhere. It would always be dripping gas, and, and when it would get filled up, it would go shoot out. So uh, now it's uh, way freaking better. Let's see. Hey guys, back here with the uh, on the EVAP uh, conversion project, and <clears throat> this actually I'm gonna tap into the uh, the vent, the the full uh, like where the uh, where the filler cap where the filler goes. There's actually a vent line down there, and. Since my tank, it's, it's an aero tank, 23 gallon. It never came with a EVAP uh, port on it. So, I mean, there's a fuel injection port. I mean, I have, I have a, you know, outlet and in, inlet. But, so I'm going to tap into that line. And maybe put a little stuff right there. And I'm uh, going to run an EVAP hose. But let me show you where I'm going to mount the canister. Sorry, I was, garage is a mess right now. Freaking, we're going to like, yesterday I did a transmission to fix on my uh, power stroke. But let me, uh. Show you right there. Hopefully you can see that. So mounted right back there is the EVAP canister. And so right there. I'm gonna mount this against the wall right there. And then I run a hose up here up to the uh, air box here. Out of this port right here. And block that port off. But alright, I'll get that mounted and uh start getting this vacuum line right from the uh, tank there. This damn uh, vent hose off, but let me tell you about some bling. Um, I used to be really into bling and everything chrome and crazy when my uh, Bronco was supercharged, but sometimes it's bling, you know. Actually, I had a, a couple times where I had some uh, vacuum hose that was covering in uh, the stuff right here, but it was hiding a vacuum leak. So I was chasing a vacuum leak I couldn't find, and um, you know, that's why I don't have anything bling on my car anymore because I'm trying to. You know, make it more as reliable as possible, and not have to deal with the cleaning the thing up. You know, like when it was chrome, it was a nightmare to keep clean. You know, like all the aluminum, well, uh, aluminum uh, valve covers. You know, just keeping all the shit clean all the time was just a headache. So, especially when you go off roading and you get the whole engine bay dusty. So, yeah, forget the bling. All right, guys. Hopefully, you guys get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. Um, so this is going to go in the tank. This is going to go to the filler neck. And this is going to feed back up to the engine compartment to that charcoal canister. And I'm going to keep it, you know, um, at 12 o'clock, you know, pointing up because if fuel, I don't want fuel to go, uh, you know, I want to keep this up because I don't want fuel to come up in this line. It's only just to collect vapors. Um, plus my uh, charcoal canister is actually higher than the actual tank. So fuel should never actually go up that high anyways. So, all right, so I'm going to get this uh, mount in there and uh, feed this up to the uh, charcoal canister. Hope you guys can see this. So, had the hose fitted up up around here, and if this was connected to the intake manifold, like a, a manifold vacuum source with like a purge valve, you connect here. But if you're going to be using like what I'm, I'm going to be using the actual, uh, I'm going to be venting this to the actual uh, the cold air intake thing here, or just like the intake system, not not that here, but the, uh, the the filter, I guess. I'll try to tap it in the name of this, but. 
So yeah, this would be if you this would actually you'd use this if it fed to a purge valve because you can't have this thing on 24/7 manhole vacuum because it would create a vacuum leak. There's not enough resistance in this thing. So uh, I'm actually going to be connecting it here, which then is going to go to my cold air, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, but and there's a slight amount of vacuum, and that's just enough to purge this vent here. So originally it was connected to this port, but I'm not going to use that. Put that on there. I'm going to use this one here. This originally had a cap here. So it just comes off. I'm going to feed this up to my input here. I'm going to use this hose right here. So I'll go right there. I'm going to feed it up into here. That's it. I'm going to drill a hole. I have a little tap fitting I'll show you in a couple seconds and get it going. All right, guys. So back here and I have this little tap. This normally would come like a, with like a air cleaner from like a, I think, it's, I think I got it like an Edelbrock air cleaner. It's kind of like a design for this sort of situation. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm bringing this hose up from the front here and I'm going to mount it right into that hole. I'm going to mount that thing on the side of that. And the goal is to trap the fuel vapors between the air filter down here and the intake. So this is hopefully going to prevent the vapors from going out, you know, I mean, into the air. Like I'm, I don't care about the I'm, this thing's say I don't care about the environment, you know, well, not really. But I'm not an environmentalist, so really I, I just did this to uh, stop fuel vapors, and I'll explain to you when I'm done with this. But all right, all right, guys, there it is. So what this does just feeds to my air intake here. It's trapped between the filter and the engine, so the vapors are going to stay in this tube right here. From here, and actually, as the actual engine fires up, I mean, it's going to create a slight amount, of, a slight amount of vacuum, which is going to suck and empty this uh, charcoal canister. Well, that's at least the theory behind it. Um, and then this actually vents back down to the tank, you know, and feeds down my fuel rail, and follows my fuel line back up into here, and then vents the tank. So, and now I have that tricked out cap, which keeps it totally sealed, and. That's it. So, um, yeah, I guess the, the reason why I went through all this trouble and, and hell um, is that when I would park this truck in a, in a garage overnight, I mean, the whole garage after, you know, even just a few hours would be, it would drink like gas. I mean, it would feel like, you know, if you light a match, it would blow up. Um, that and, you know, every, what I noticed is that once I did the cap conversion, even before I did this conversion here, it was, a totally sealed tank is I always had a problem with you know when I would be on the freeway you know my windows would roll down and I'd stop all of a sudden really quickly I'd get this huge flood of like gas fumes into my in the cab and it drove me crazy and you know doing that fuel cap conversion you know with the, the real twist on cap um, I don't even smell it anymore so I don't know like originally I thought my car my engine was just running rich you know because I let off the gas real fast and you know, I was messing with the decal settings on the fuel injection system, thinking that was it. I was just throwing out a bunch of fuel out of the tailpipe. But what I think is the whole time it was because the cap didn't seal correctly, the fuel inside the tank moved around and shot a bunch of like gas fumes out of the out of the side of the, the, the cap there. And somehow, like a like a wind vortex, you know, would come up and it would pull through the back of the car or cab or something. And you know, I mean, I, I was fine. I was used to it. I've been driving this car for for 20 years, but Anytime I had a passenger, they're like, holy fucking shit, you know? You're gonna freaking die of fumes in here, you know? But, um, so yeah, I mean, this should this should keep it all contained now, you know? Like I said, I really don't care about the venting part of it. I just, the problem is, if you don't have some sort of vent uh, on the uh, on the tank, it builds up too much pressure, you know? And it can mess up with my, my I'm guessing it, it seems like it could mess with my, um, my fuel pressure testing, you know, my, that's my fuel pressure regulator right there, but, you know. It's gonna be messing with the electric fuel pump, you know. It's good. The fuel pump will have to drive harder than it should. So now I have a sealed tank, completely sealed tank with a vent system, and the goal is to prevent fumes. So, um, so awesome. I think that's gonna work. You know, what I mean, like so, even just without the the charcoal canister, man, I, I didn't smell fumes anymore. So, um, but that wasn't a long-term solution because I had to, I had to vent the tank somehow. So. Hopefully this works. Hopefully this helps somebody. Alright, cool.